What is going on, guys? So I got a date for you guys. 10-31-2015. That is the last time I have ever released a baseball banter. 12-19-14. In 12-19-14, the number one song in the country was Blank Space. The average price of gas was $2.55. The number one movie in the country was The Hobbit, The Battle of Five Armies. I was 23 and about a person lighter. And my friend, we all know him. We all love him. My brother from another mother, the kid with the not-so-golden locks. Everybody, round of applause for Mike fucking Hewitt. Mikey boy, he's back. What's going on, Mikey boy? it's a pleasure to be back, and uh, yeah, the Golden Locks are a thing in the past. I know you guys might be saying, what's up with this hairdo? I will say I'm in Fort Myers, Florida. We just got hit with that hurricane, so haven't uh, been able to reach a shower as often as I would have liked, but we're, we're here, and the baseball playoffs are among us, so all nothing to complain about. All good stuff. I feel like a proud father right now, because last time that we did this, that was eight years ago. Okay, I was 23. How old would you have been? In 2014. Yeah, I'd be, I would have been 19, I think. You looked like Slim Shady Eminem with the blonde locks, and I always used to give you so much shit for it. Now you have an adult haircut somewhat, and you have a fucking beard, Mike. I have a beard. Listen, I haven't been able to shave, man. The water's contaminated down here, or else I'd be clean shaven. But no, you're right. Um, Had to grow up a little bit. The blonde hair is a thing of the past. I still have dreams about it. It's, it's embarrassing to watch some of those videos. I don't have any regrets for necessarily, but you know, I wish I, I guess I wish I thought it could have done some things a little differently. Cause I, I look back and I think that that was not a good look, but before, it, before it we jump into this, before we jump into this, I want to ask you legitimately over the last eight years and uh, not to air out any dirty laundry between us on YouTube, but Mikey and I went a couple years without talking after, you know, we've been friends for a long time. No joke. I've known Mike since 2010. He was one of the the OGs to this shit, to my channel. And he was streaming when I was streaming. Him and I, when we started this shit, podcasts were barely a thing. It was just in its infancy. Do you ever go back and watch any of our old baseball banters and videos? Yeah, I do. So actually, I go back and probably mid 2014, I think, 2015, when the Tigers were pretty good. And I, there's a couple of videos particularly where Joe Nathan was the Tigers closer and he was struggling and he wasn't a big fan of the fans of the Tigers because he wasn't performing well. And there's a one video in particular where you God, were yeah, talking yeah. about the salary he was making and how he flipped off the fans after one poor outing. And you were just like, start getting effing outs and you bang the table a few times. And it was just like, I was laughing on the video back then and I still laugh at about it now. But yeah, I mean, it was, it was a thing I enjoyed doing and um, you know, obviously there were a couple of years where we didn't, uh, you know, we didn't really talk to each other too much, but you know, that, that's, that's in the past now. And, uh, we're here, it's 2022 and we got some great postseason matchups coming up in this new format, John. And I guess before we start with our picks and how we're going to preview this whole thing, what do you think of the new postseason format? Do you like it? Or is this, do you miss the one game playoff? <laughs> Well, let's face it. The whole reason why the one-game playoff was a thing is because of your boys in 2011 collapsing and the Cardinals doing what they did and the Rays doing what they did, and the MLB just tried to recapture that. And they made that stupid one-game playoff because they tried to add another playoff team, and they wanted to try to make that 162 feeling again. And it never really was the thing. I mean, think about it. How many teams did we see get absolutely boned by that one-game playoff? Like, remember the Pirates? The Pirates got boned. Um, There's a lot of teams that, I mean, even that 2014 Oakland A's team that struggled mightily in September. Remember that game against the Royals that went, like, extra innings? And, like, the, the Royals came back. They were losing, like, late in the eighth inning. And they, they were, I'll say this. Some teams, obviously, a team's going to get boned. You play 162 games, you lose one game, and now you're going home. Even the Yankees last year, Yankees had... 90 plus 90 I think they had 91 wins or 92 wins and you know three hours in their season's over of course it was an unfair sort of deal some people some people would would argue but I would also say there were some great games that the one game playoff allowed us to see and the one I referenced with the Oakland A's and the Royals is one of them you had that infamous game with the uh, Braves and the Cardinals with the infield fly that was then that you know, was the mid- first year that was Chipper Jones yeah that was 2012 um you know 
the Pir- the Pirates Cubs game. Uh, Garrett Cole giving up those bombs to Schwarber, and I, I I don't know if Chris I don't know if Rizzo went deep in that game, but I I don't mean to jump down your throat and give you my opinion. So go ahead. I mean, were you a fan? I mean, no, I it was okay. It was more baseball. It seems like you seem to like it though. I liked it for the fact that it was it was theater. You know, I mean, the Blue Jays Orioles game, the Enwin Encarnacion walk off home run in twenty sixteen. That was a great baseball game. And, I, and YouTube has done a great job to kind of really just make the condensed game available where you don't have to watch three hours of it. You can just watch all the root, the plays that happened in it in like 16 minutes and go back and watch that game. Tremendous game. I mean, Manny Machado had some great double plays, a lot of offense, and then obviously the, the grand finale with the home run by Encarnacion. I mean, I, I liked it, but I also always hoped the Red Sox should never be playing in it. Now, yep. that was kind of my thought. It was like, as a neutral fan, it was fun to watch because it was winner go home, it, you know, because sometimes, you know, if your team's like the Red Sox aren't in the playoffs this year, right? Sometimes watching a best of seven series, like watching games two or games three, it's like, you know, you don't have that same feeling or I don't have that same feeling of watching a game seven or a winner go home game where it's like everything's on the line. Teams are going to be bringing in starters out of the bullpen because if you don't win, you're going home. And so I like that effect of it. But yeah, I never want to see the Red Sox playing it. And honestly, I guess it brings it back to the question that I originally asked. I mean, do you like this this new format with the best of three? The one works in football, and because it's a such a short season, when 162, it just doesn't work. Uh, I do like the best of three because at least it gives you a chance to redeem yourself. Like if you squeak into the playoffs, kind of like the Phillies. Uh, we'll touch on the predictions, but you know they barely got in second from last day of the season, and now they have instead of a one game thing. Uh, you know, they have a chance to now make some noise, you know. Well, and they wouldn't even have qualified. I mean, they're the sixth team. Yeah, 100%. So they would even, yeah, they would have missed out. So, I mean, it's it's better, and it's definitely more fair. Uh, I, I've heard people already bitching about how they might need to re- they need to reseed after the wild card round because there's certain positions you might want to have versus being the one seed because, like, the two seeds might have an easier – way uh, or facing a lesser opponent but i don't know dude, dude it's the first year of this and we really don't know what it's gonna be i think we need like two or three post seasons before we go you know when when the pirates were 97 win teams those couple years in a row and they were done both times you know i could i could get it you're kind of pissed that you don't have a chance to use someone else besides one starter so we'll see but it's definitely i i like it better i don't know about you I, honestly i i love it i mean i'm not a fan of turning baseball into the NBA where you have half the league making the playoffs and you have teams with under 500 records getting into the playoffs as an eight seed. And I know that in the NBA, you don't see upsets like that happen. Like you'll never see an eight seed upset a one seed in basketball, but you know, I didn't want baseball to turn into a sport where it pretty much makes the regular season to completely meaningless because if you're just 500, you're going to get in. So why, why bother tuning in for the regular season? Because you, you could have a subpar team and still make it. So I like that they made it the format that it is, that it, there's an incentive to get the buy, or there should be, right? I mean, maybe there'll be too many days off, but in theory, you get you get five days off, which is kind of standard because the season would normally end on a Sunday, and the ALDS or NLDS wouldn't start again until Thursday or Friday. So the, the layoff isn't too, isn't too different for the teams with the buys, but it gives them an incentive. Um, and I like the fact that it's it's like enough teams get in where I don't feel like any team that's currently in this playoff uh, for the 2022, I don't think any team that wins is unworthy of a World Series. I would say every single team put forth a good enough um, effort in the regular season where if they get crowned the World Series, I wouldn't say it's it's a, you know, that's a sham, that's that's an outrage. And even, and, and, you know, even you can't even avoid that in the perfect systems because go back to 2006, I hate to bring it up, John, but yeah. when you only had four teams make it in each league, you had the 83 win St. Louis Cardinals win the World Series. So even in a system yeah. like that, where people would say it was perfect, a team with a crap record, but they're in a bad division, some they get in because they win a bad division, they could still win the World Series. And that's that's one of the beauties about this sport. I love that generally, once you get in, it's a, it, anybody can win. I mean, the Dodgers have been the best team in baseball for the last 10 years. They won one World Series, and it was in that fluke year in 2020, you know? And if you want to get a little spoiler for my preview for picks, I don't think they're winning it this year. But I just I love the fact that baseball, it's a it's a crapshoot when you get in the playoffs and you got to earn it. You got you got to have a good 162 game season. It's not like any of the other sports generally where you know you can be mediocre or 
you know, you, you, you have to have a pretty healthy season, a pretty, um, you know, you, you have to be able to be, uh, to get through adversity and, 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 and push through. And sometimes you might benefit from being in a bad division, but a lot of, you know, I would say any team that makes the playoffs in this current format, it's generally earned and we'll see how it goes years down the road. Maybe there's a couple of years where it's like, yeah, geez, that team won 82 games and they got in, but I still don't think that's the case. I mean, I think that, you know what, and we're kind of getting too long on this topic, but I'll just say lastly about it is that, you know, there's some concern that, yeah, you're going to be allowing in some crappy teams that don't deserve it. I think what I've thought about baseball a lot this year is, yeah, there's a lot of bad teams, but there's a lot of good teams. I mean, you, you have your, you have your tiered great teams. You have the Dodgers, you got the Braves, you got the Astros, the Yankees didn't play great in the second half, but they still won over hundred games. I mean, you got those teams that are on the great level, but you still have some really good teams and you got some teams that didn't get in that, you know, aren't terrible. I mean, the Milwaukee Brewers obviously missed out. I think they, I think they have the same record as Philadelphia, but they're out on the tie as a tiebreaker. As tiebreaker, um, yeah. You know, Baltimore was decent, you know, for the second half of the year. Um, the White Sox weren't, I mean, they didn't play great, but they're not a bad team. I wouldn't say. And they, but they finished under 500. I think, long story short, the cream is going to rise to the top anyways. It doesn't really matter how many teams get in. The best of the best is going to win. It's just extra games, more playoff money, uh, uh, keeping more fans in it. It's essentially what it is. And that's what it comes down to. I like the fact that, yeah, most teams are not going to be out of it in September. I mean, obviously you'll have some teams that are, but you'll still have a lot more teams in the fight and having that reason to tune in and check in on your team in September. That's, that's what I think makes the great sport. I think that's better off for the sport, but we can move on. Yep. And the last thing I'll I'll talk about real quick, if they didn't have this new playoff format, all the races would have been done almost three weeks ago. So it just goes to show you how much it paid dividends of having an extra wild card. So I think what we're going to do is, is we're going to start with the American League. We're going to go series by series because we're going to do this again uh, when the World Series goes. So we're going to basically preview series by series, give our predictions, who advances until we get to the World Series. And we won't give our uh, – we'll give our World Series pick and prediction. And then come World Series time, we're going to come back and do another episode and revisit our predictions and talk about everything that had happened. So I'll let you go first, Mikey boy. We're going to start uh, in the American League, and we're going to start with the 6-3 matchup. You have the Tampa Bay Rays against the surprise Cleveland Guardians. A little backstory, Cleveland won the Central this year. Uh, Everyone thought it was going to be the White Sox, but Cleveland's a team that doesn't strike out a lot, puts the ball in play, but has a bunch of great defenders, a bunch of pesky hitters, and they always have a good pitching staff. The Rays are the Rays. They're not like the kind of the powerhouse that they were, you know, the last couple of years, I would say, because their offense isn't like it has been. They've been kind of home run depleted and they've had injuries. So what say you? Who advances? I have not made my picks on this at all for any of these series, but I'm going to say I like Cleveland in this. I like Cleveland in this series. I mean, I know they're a young team and not a lot of experience. I think they're the youngest team in the big leagues. And it's crazy that they won a division given you know, how young they are of a team, even though they're younger but, than some triple A teams. Yeah. I mean, they got a lot of talent, you know, in, in that team. And I think one of the fun things about their, about them versus a lot of other teams is that, yeah, they put the ball in play, not a lot of strikeouts compared to other teams, not a lot of homers, but um, I, you know, it's, it's a tough series. Obviously it's a best of three. I think, you know, Tampa hasn't played. I think you throw almost every stat out the window. I think you throw out records and everything. Tampa didn't play well on the road this year, but they played in the AL East, and they, they still found a way to win 87 games in that division. A lot of good teams in that division. Cleveland, you know, yeah, they won over 90 games, but they beat up on a lot of crappy teams. Let's face it, your Tigers, the Twins weren't very good. Chicago struggled. Kansas City was awful. I mean, not not the same schedule, um, but Cleveland has been playing great at the end of September. You know, they, they, they had to still fight for that division until a couple, maybe a week and a half ago. I mean, Chicago had a big ago, yeah. series. Yeah, I mean, it was not – it was not – finished. I mean, they had to still win those games and they did. Um, I think they're going to go into it with, I, th- I think they go into the series and I, 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 fi- I think they find a way to win. But I mean, again, all these series are hard to predict because I feel like Tampa Bay with who they're throwing, Shane McClanahan, I mean, he started the All-Star game. He's an unbelievable talent. They are bringing Glass now back. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if, if the Rays, you know, find a way to, to, to beat the Indians and, you know, wouldn't, in Cleveland, you know, they're a bunch of young guys. Maybe they're not ready for the spotlight. I mean, I'm just curious to see if that place is going to sell out. I know they had a really bit tough time with attendance this year. I would assume that, you know, with the playoffs, they'll still find a way to get a packed house in there and represent for their for their team. But, uh, you know, I think Cleveland wins, but 
I am not happy picking it. I'm going to go a little bit more confident than you. I think Cleveland wins, and I don't think it is that hard to decide because if I had to – you look at the upper end of the rotations, and in this time starting pitching counts the most, and we all know it, in the postseason you can have a couple good starters and you can ride them. Uh, and you look at the Rays, McClanahan – did get hurt not that long ago. Glassnut's coming back and is still really hasn't been – he's only had a few starts and he hasn't pitched a bunch of innings. Now the Rays are good at bullpenning and pitching off their starters or whoever they have to put out there to bridge it. But they've been a very power-depleted team. They've had a lot of injuries. That's a team that they are permissible to the strikeout. And you have a staff that has swing and miss stuff. Tristan McKenzie was so good this year. Uh, Shane Bieber looked like Cy Young Bieber with less velocity, but still just as good. The Tigers had to face him about three times this year, and they actually got to him one of the three times. But the Tigers, you said they beat, beat him up. The Tigers did lose the season series to the Guardians, but it was only by one game. So they did play them a lot tougher this year. So at, I know it's it's still a loss in the, in the column, but it is what it is. But from watching them 19 times this past season – the Guardians, they're super pesky, and their defense is amazingly good with Quan and Miles Straw. And their their biggest thing is is they have to be able to manufacture runs. And I feel like if they can't play enough small ball because you know McClanahan uh, and Glasnow do are able to hold their their guys at bay from stringing consecutive hits, then they're going to be screwed because really their only good power hitter on that whole team is Josh Naylor. But I feel like with how good that bullpen is. Having Cal Quantrill, Bieber, and McKenzie, I don't think I think the Guardians are a surprise team, and the the Rays have just been too hurt this year. I just don't believe in them like I did last year or the years prior that they're going to make a bunch of noise. So, so we both have the Guardians advancing to play the Yankees. So we're going to go with the other wild card. This is a great, I think, one of the best wild card matchups of all of them. We got the number five Seattle Mariners versus the number four Toronto Blue Jays. Who are you taking? You know, I mean, just before I announce my pick, I let's just say it's a shame this series isn't taking place in Seattle. I mean, how great would it be to see a playoff series being held at Safeco Field? I mean, those fans were selling out. I mean, it, it, my pick's the Blue Jays. My pick is the Blue Jays, and I'm going to say that confidently. I think that the Mariners are a Cinderella story. I mean, they're good. Don't get me wrong. You know, Luis Castillo, the acquisition and extending him, I think, is great for the team. You know, Logan Gilbert, they have a lot of good pitchers. They got some great offensive hitters in that lineup. Would I be surprised if Seattle beats Toronto? No. But to me, the one disappointing moment of this series is that it's not being played in Seattle because I would love to see the fans get to watch their Mariners play in a playoff series. I think being on the road and then going home is going to be tough. If they get through Toronto and they play the Yankees, I mean – or no, they'll play Houston. This yeah, year they play, play Houston. Houston. So that would yep. be a great AL West matchup. Um, but I'm sorry. I mean, that, that Toronto lineup this year, it was – this was a team that was – before the season started, people were predicting to go to the World Series. And, you know, they struggled a little bit earlier in the season, um, then started to play better in the second half. They annihilated the Red Sox this year, going 16-3 and three against them. But they played they played the Yankees well. They, 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 they're they a very dangerous team. And if they get hot, they're, I would say, unbeatable. I mean, yeah, after Alec Manoa, it's a little bit sketchy because you've got Jose Barrios, who I don't think is necessarily that reliable. I can totally see him getting banged around in a game. I love Alec Manoa though. I think he's, I think he's, he's a stud. I, you know, so I like Toronto winning the first game, and then you know if they got to win one of the next two, I think it helps that they're home. Again, don't get me wrong. You know, a sold out Rogers Center, or whatever they call it now, is still a, a great atmosphere for a playoff series. Toronto's a great team. You know, I, I feel like I don't think they're afraid. And again, I do think that it helps them that they that they played in the American League East this year, um, and. I guess it's just a, it's a sad ending to the Mariners se- uh, season because they were such a fun team, such a great team. And again, this is the first time since 2001 that they've been in the playoffs. So, you yeah. know, I guess for my sake and for our sake, let's hope they make it to Sunday. Let's see a three game series, but I don't see the Mariners taking two out of three here. Mikey boy, I have your Seattle Mariners beating the Toronto Blue Jays. And here's why the Blue Jays this year, they started out super hot. I will. The, their most memorable series to me is when they played the Yankees in the Bronx. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. goes deep three times after, and he gets goes deep after he gets spiked at first base with a bloody hand twice off of Garrett Cole, and everyone's thinking 
myself included, I never texted you at the start of the season. Blue Jays are winning the East. Guilty. Totally bought into the hype. But what happened? Their offense went cold. Everyone's like, why are the Blue Jays not hitting? Why are the Blue Jays not hitting? And then they fire their manager. And since then, they've definitely played a lot better. But this team, they're, they strike out a lot. This team has had periods of time where their offense goes completely cold. And they just don't have enough consistent starting pitching. I have watched the Mariners over the last three days play the Tigers. They just played the Tigers a couple weeks ago. You want to talk about being able to hit home runs? Their lineup may not be as deep as the Blue Jays. Fine, I'll give you that. But J-Rod's got pop. Ty France has got pop. Mitch Hanniger's got pop. Abraham Toro's got pop. They have a, a Cal Raleigh has a lot of pop. They could put home runs up on the board almost as fast as the Blue Jays. And you know something? They have legitimate pitchers at the top end of that rotation that can shut lineups down like the Blue Jays. So if the Blue Jays had a couple, uh, uh, one more starting pitcher to where they could piggyback off of Mandela, who I love, I took him in our fantasy league, which I did horrible in. I don't even want to get into that <laughs> that topic. Talking about getting screwed. But I got I to gotta disagree with you, Mikey. Boy, I got the Mariners moving on. I just think they have too much pitching, and that lineup is seriously underrated. I wouldn't hate it if the Mariners advanced, but I, I'm taking Toronto. Okay, so now we're going to go back. And now we're in the ALDSs as we're looking into our crystal ball. We would have the Cleveland Guardians versus the New York Yankees. Who are you taking in that series? I'm taking the Yankees. I mean, I know they played uh, very mediocre for pretty much the second half of the season. Because, I mean, at one point they were like 60 and like 23. I mean, they had, they had some unbelievable record early on in the year, like for, for the first half of the year. And then, you know, I mean, it looked at a point that they were going to actually blow the division. That's how badly they were playing. And, you know, listen, this is not a team that doesn't have questions. Garrett Cole, Garrett Cole at home is almost scarier for the, for the Yankees. I don't know. I think he's a mental a mental midget and him pitching a game one at Yankee stadium. I could totally see him getting hit, hit around. Um, I, I like the Yankees in this matchup. I think, I think if Cleveland gets through Tampa, you're asking them to then get through a best of five against, against New York. I mean, they're not going to be throwing Shane. I don't think they'll be throwing Shane Bieber in game one. You know, they're going to have to find a way to, you know, to get a couple, a couple starts, get a couple quality outings in the early part of that series on the road. And then they'll have to worry about, you know, having Shane Bieber back and, and the rest of the staff for the for the home part of the series and then maybe game five. But I they'd have to bounce these, Tampa quick. They'd have I, to bounce them pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. But I, I don't know. I just think New York, um, at least in this series, I think that they're going to – they'll find a way. They'll find – I mean, you know, I think New York will play will, – will win, will win their home games and then they'll find a way to win one of the two at, um, on the road. And then if they have to go play game five in New York, I'll take the Yankees. I don't think they're. I don't think the Yankees are nasty. I think that they're in close to late games. You know, watch out for the ninth inning. I wouldn't be surprised if they blow some saves, and that could be the um, the undoing of New York. You know, who are they going to use in the ninth inning to close out a game? Is it going to be Clay Holmes? I mean, uh, and he's hurt. Is Holmes actually? Oh yeah, Holmes is hurt. So, yeah, yeah, he's I mean, hurt. I I'm not even I'm not even sure they're going to give the ball to. Um, I know they're using Lois Lois and and a few other guys. Lois baby, Johnny Lasagna. Yeah, I, I, I don't know who it's going to be. So if those games are tight, that could be a little sketchy. But if it's Cleveland, New York, and if Cleveland makes it to the ALCS, then hats off to them. I just don't see it. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. And, you know, the Yankees are being as good as they, they were. They're really not that impressive of a team because they basically bowled out uh, until about 90 games into the season. And, I mean, you look at, like, the first 90 games, they were getting, like, mere, every time Matt Carpenter stepped up to the plate, it was a home run. Oh, it was unbelievable. And, you know, and they're getting – their lineup is getting healthier, you know, because I don't know how close Matt Carpenter is to coming back. And then they got Harrison Bader back, and now they got DJ LeMahieu back. But that whole lineup has pretty much been Aaron Judge for the last two months of the season. And if I'm a team – and you don't really have to respect anybody in that lineup besides Aaron Judge and maybe Giancarlo Stanton because Giancarlo Stanton, he shows up in the playoffs, you know, like yeah, he when does. played the Red Sox. So you got that, but I think their lineup is, is pitchable too. And, you know, Glaber has been super up and down, and DJ the Mayhew is just now coming back. Is Matt Carpenter, if he does play, is he going to be able to hit a home run every time he come to the bat like the natural? I don't know. They're, they're not – 
super scary to me, but I think they could beat the Guardians. Um, and, like, I don't even believe – I feel like since Garrett Cole left Houston, he's just not the same kind of, of pitcher like he was. You know, like, every time he pitches at Fenway, in, in regular season games when it counts, he just – he has blow-up starts every single time. Yeah, I have I, I don't have a lot of faith in him. And, and I wonder just thing about Judge real quick with the lineup. If I'm Cleveland or whoever plays New York, you, I don't pitch to Judge at all. Let these other guys beat you. I would not let Aaron Judge – do anything i would i would pitch around him i would be happy to walk him and if stan takes you deep then you know what you tip your cap but i would let these other guys beat you and i would give judge nothing because like you said he's been the, the one consistent uh hitter for them this year and to pitch to him and let him beat you at this point would just be foolish and look at the last week when most teams have been pitching around aaron judge the yankees haven't won that many games in in the last week and a half i know they clinched but still so i would go yankees over guardians to go to the alcs but, you know, I don't have a lot of faith in them. So then it would be, for, for both of us, it doesn't really matter. You would have the Blue Jays facing the Astros, and I would have the Mariners facing the Astros. Who would you take in that series? You know, I think this, – This is easy, Mikey. Come on. Don't I even give Houston, a reason. I think Houston is – I think Houston is gonna, would get by would get by Toronto. But the thing is, I mean, what, are we going to just pick the favorites here? we got to make this fun, man. I mean – Houston in another ALCS, that would mean Houston made the ALCS last year. They made it in 2020. They made it in 2019. They're good, dude. 2018. They're freaking amazingly good. I just feel like, you know what, sometimes baseball happens and, and weird things happen, and Houston's not going to the ALCS. I don't have a legitimate reason why, because if you, you can give me chapter and verse why they're going to make it, and I'd have no logical defense other than to say it's baseball, and if I was betting on it, the sh- the smart person would say, take the Astros because they're a sure thing. And you know what the best thing about sports is, and especially this one, there are no sure things. Anything can happen in October, and I'm taking Toronto to go to the ALC. You are smoking. You need to put some hair dye back in your head because you lost your brain, brother. What are you doing? Maybe I'm smarter I'm, now. I'm not blonde. I'm giving you five seconds to revoke that horrible take. Five, four, I told three. you, there's no rational oh my behind God. it. I can't make sense of it. You would say, yeah, right. you got – go ahead. Oh. You're taking Houston. It's going to be another rematch of Yankees-Astros. Okay. You have the Cy Young winner at 39 years old who just shows up every single time in the playoffs. How good was Framber Valdez this year? Their bullpen is the number one bullpen in baseball. You got Kyle Tucker with 30 jacks this year. You ever heard of that guy named Jordan Alvarez? Alex Oops. Bregman. Breggy Smalls is back. Jeremy Pena replaces Correa, Jose Altuve, and not to mention how good of a, a catcher uh, Maldonado is at calling a game. Mikey, this team is a freight train, and you need to jump on it. They're on the top of their tracks at the stadium. Going I'm shoot, tired shoot. of that team, man. I'm tired of that team. They're an amazing team. They're a great team. And listen, they deserve the one seed for a reason, but anything can happen. And it wouldn't, in a, in a, a best of five is still a short series. It's still a short series. Yeah, for the team so, that's going to get eliminated by them, they're yeah. going to destroy them. Oh, well, you know what? Sometimes I also believe, and I don't know what you think of this, let's see how this wild card weekend works. I mean, sometimes I think there's momentum that can quickly build. I mean, if Toronto, you know, you know, hits 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 the crap out of the ball on Friday and Saturday, you know, maybe they're feeling good, and then they got a game on Tuesday, you know, and, and uh, Houston will just had four or five days off. I don't know. Sometimes I think that's when it helps the the teams that have been playing because it's like they're in a rhythm, and now you're playing a team that has that's been off for a week, and you got you got the winner coming right in saying, "Yeah, we're ready to go. We just knocked out this one team, and now we're ready to take on the top dog." I, I, again, it'd be a great best of five: Toronto, Houston, or you got Seattle. So you you think Seattle's Cinderella story ends? You think Seattle can uh, have no flat chance? dead? J Rod's okay. gonna be sitting there on the bench going, "I hope J Rod is gonna be like." Uh, when the the bank they're gonna be like the equivalent of like the Bengals last year. The Bengals won like their first playoff series in thirty years, and it's a great story. Now the Bengals they go to the Super Bowl, but that's what it's gonna be like. They're gonna get out of the first round. It's gonna be great. Seattle's gonna have a home game, and Ken Griffey Jr. is gonna throw out the first pitch and all that other good stuff. But then Houston's gonna come in like a hammer and smash, absolutely done, dominate. Houston Yankees is going to be my ALCS. So you would have 
the Yankees and Blue Jays to go to the World Series, who would win between those two? I'm taking Toronto. Um, I mean, wow. I Even would, with that pitching staff, you think they would get see? The I'm, I'm a little bit torn because I will say this: I do think that I think that any of these wild card teams, they can obviously get the winners and get through one of the rounds. I think they can get through the DS. Now you're asking them to get through a CS. I mean, you know, it's 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 only a couple extra games, but those extra games, you know, depending on how long the DS goes, could could impact that. And I think obviously Toronto getting past Houston is not going to be a three game sweep. You would think if they do get through Houston, it would have to go the distance, right? Four or five games. Um, New York, I think, is going to have an easier time with Cleveland or Tampa. So I'm almost inclined to pick the Yankees, but I think that I just don't see the Yankees as this year's World Series team. And uh, so I'm going to take Toronto again a little bit reluctantly because I do think I, I do have questions about that staff, but I I love I love that offense. And sometimes I think that, you know, the whole notion is pitching and defense wins championships. Sometimes I think great offense wins championships. I mean, you just referenced the Houston Astros lineup and how deadly that is and how how, how much of a force that offense impacts, you know, the game. So I, I think if Toronto gets hot, Toronto can get hot for three weeks. Toronto can get hot for three weeks. And, you know, for my sake, I hope now's the time. You know, even though they're in the American League East, I have no hatred of the Blue Jays. I think they're a fun team. I like them. I think they're a very good team. Um, if they get through, well, I'll say this. If Toronto gets through um, Seattle and then Houston, I think they'll go to New York saying, yeah, it's let's let's win this thing. If they get through Houston, then I would be 100% in agreement with you because Houston's a juggernaut. But they just they just don't have enough enough pitching. And well, we'll look back in a few weeks and we'll see we'll see the Jays getting ready for the World Series and you'll say I was right. Brother, it's your world. I'm just living it. I'm just the narrator right here. That's well, all you got over, But you have New York and Houston. So another rematch of the uh, – this will be the third Astros. matchup. Astros, dude. There is no way that the Yankees are going to be able to do what the Red Sox did in 2018 where Houston took game one and then Boston came back and essentially swept them in four to go to the World Series. I mean, and you look at, like, the, the Jays could – I don't think they're going to do this, obviously, because of how good the Astros are. If the Jays are lucky, they could pull what Houston pulled last year when they when they got to the World Series basically on two arms, which was Valdez and Grinky and Christian Javier. Uh, but you see what happened when they got against a team that could really pitch. They got bounced by the Braves in six. So that, I think, is the best-case scenario for your Blue Jays pick that they somehow – uh, are able to capture that kind of mojo. Okay, so now we have the AL set. We're going to move to the NL. So you would have the Blue Jays in the World Series, and I have Houston. Uh, Phillies, Cardinals, go ahead, kick us off. I don't think this is a, too much of a hard one either. Yeah, um, you know, I don't think the Phillies are a great team. I don't trust Aaron Nola at all. I think Zach Wheeler is pretty good, but, you know, I don't think he's a sure thing. Um I don't think Adam Wainwright's a sure thing. And if they're going to use Jack Flaherty in game two, I don't really like him either. I think these two teams are the weakest of probably – they're two of the weaker teams in all of the teams that qualified for the playoffs. I know St. Louis, you know, they won over 90 games. I'm happy for Nolan Arenado, obviously Albert Pujols. Um, I think who wins this series, I think, you know – You know it. Just say it. All right. I think St. Louis wins this series, um, but I think it goes the distance. You know, I think I think Philly will find a way to win one of the first two games. But, yeah, I, I think St. Louis in the end will, will advance, and then they'll get eliminated in the next round. I agree. It's going to be the Cardinals, and I'll give the Phillies one. You want to talk about the most heckle and jide – heckle and uh, – Jekyll and Hyde. Jekyll and Hyde team, it's the Phillies. You want to talk – that team was seven games under 500, and then they win seven straight, and – then they're playing great, and then they almost missed the postseason. It, it, it's they're going to win one game uh, for whatever, but it's it's the Cardinals, and I agree with you on the Cardinals pitching staff. It's a big question, but there that's enough to beat the Phillies. So then we would have, and I don't this the NL playoffs kind of sucks. Uh, you have the Padres and Mets. I disagree. Go ahead. I think this series, and my heart is. I'm pulling for the New York Metropolitans. If you were to tell me, they're gonna do it. It's not even gonna be a series, dude. 
Met, if you were in the, I'm not even in Connecticut anymore, and I still know what the feel is like for Mets fans up there. There is panic in the streets. There is there there is a feeling that their season was all for nothing after what happened last weekend in Atlanta. Um, and there's a lot of negativity around the team. If you look at that lineup, it's not very scary. I mean, it really isn't. You know, they're they're capable, but they're also capable of not hitting. Um, and they're going to obviously lean on Degrom and Scherzer uh, to to carry them and win that series. I think it Which does help. Well. That, I think it's it's huge that this series is home for New York. Um, the Mets should win the series. They're better than yep. San Diego, um, yep. but wouldn't it be textbook Mets to win a hundred games and then get, and then get swept in the first round? Have you Darvish and, 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 uh, and what's his face? Joe Musgrove come in and just, you know, throw doors and shut down the Mets and, and sweep them. I mean, wouldn't that be, wouldn't that just make sense for the Mets? The Padres haven't been able to win a bunch of big games since the Soto trade. Soto has been mediocre. Josh Bell. They don't even know if he's going to make the playoff roster. Will Myers might supp- uh, supplant him. The Padres have been a s- extremely. Le- it's so ironic that the day they get Juan Soto, they score ten runs with him and Brandon Drury, and it was literally like their best offensive explosion. The Dodgers have beat their ass every single time they play. You got Degrom and Scherzer. I don't see how the Padres stand a snowflake chance in hell against the Mets. The Padres might take one because they do have talent on that team. I'm not trying to shit on them totally, but. They have been so mediocre and so average since the Soto trade, and I think maybe you could say the whole Tatis thing looms around it. But I got, I got the Mets. Taking yeah, the I got series. the Mets too. But John, but John, not to cut you off, but I have to say, it's a best of three. I mean, it's not the one game playoff, but you know, even bad teams find a way to win series. I mean, it's that's what makes this this round still not not a sure thing for the better team. Like, yeah, you have more room for error if you have a bad night. Because you can make up for for it by winning the next two nights, but it's a, the Mets should Mets win. Mets in three. Mets right. in three. I, I, I ain't even, I ain't even worried three, about it. Man. Listen, I, I, I'm with you. I got New York, so we both got the Cardinals and Mets advancing. Okay, so now we got uh, St. Louis in Atlanta. I, I mean, easy pick. You know yeah, this one. How can you go against the Braves? I mean, they've been the best team in the, in the league, you know, maybe not other than the Dodgers uh, for months now. I mean, I've been following that NL East race after the Red Sox pretty much found themselves in the, in the basement of the division. So I was just so intrigued to see them come, keep climbing up and, and then watching them shrink that division lead down to, to one game. And then eventually doing what they did over the weekend against the Mets. I mean, they're a hot team. I feel like, I feel like St. Louis will give them a series. I mean, I, 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 the one thing I'll say about St. Louis is I, I never – I respect them as an organization, and I never feel like if they do advance – like I don't think they'll go out in three. And, no, and it would be four. And let's keep this real. Until last year, Atlanta's a bunch of chokers. I mean, don't forget that. I mean, that this, this is an organization that even in years in the past when they've had great runs, great regular seasons, they, they, they let people down in the playoffs. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if they lose to the Cardinals, not because of a talent thing. Atlanta should win, but they have a history up until last year of, of blowing it. I mean, go back, go back in the 2010s to the 2000 through 2020, go back to when they were nasty, when they had Chipper Jones, Andrew Jones, when they had Mark, Gla- uh, Tom Glavin, Mar- uh, Greg Maddox, Greg Maddox. And, uh, and all those dudes, uh, John Smoltz that, you know, kept winning the divisions year after year after year, and then they get in the playoffs and they lose. I guess the one thing I will say, though, I think that will help them this year, they they haven't had three weeks to coast. You know, that's what I think hurts the Dodgers, is that you know, you, you play so well that you're, you're pretty much done playing meaningful games on September 5th, and now you got a month off. Of, yeah, you're playing every night, but the games mean nothing. And now it's playoff time, and now you're playing against teams that have kind of been in that fight, in that grind. And, you know, sometimes I think that is a disadvantage to the great teams. And I think... The fact that Atlanta, so basically the White Sox last year. Yeah, I think the fact that Atlanta has had to push for this division. I mean, hell, they've only been in first place for eight or nine days this year. I mean, that's how nine days. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I think that th- I think that does help them that they've they've they haven't had a chance to cruise. They haven't been in cruise control at all. They've been fighting for that division until again until over the weekend and even in, even until last night. They didn't clinch the division until last night. So um, I think that they'll get by St. Louis and who knows? Maybe they're maybe they're changing over there. Maybe they're turning into a winning culture of like you know what? No, this is. They're not the chokers anymore. They're going to be 
up there with the Dodgers as a team to be reckoned with for, for years to come. And they should be. They have a lot of young players, and they're locking up all these young players on cheap deals. Since May, the Braves have been better than the Dodgers record-wise uh, at the pace they played to catch the Mets. You know, and everyone's shitting on the Mets. They don't realize, you know, the pace that the Braves played yeah. at is not – when you win 100 games, you didn't collapse. Another team no. just played unbelievable. I mean, the Mets have nothing to be ashamed of. I mean, yeah, it was unfortunate that their three big starters couldn't pull out a game on the road in, in Atlanta. But you know what? You win 100 games, I'm, I don't think it's you, – you don't deserve to be, you know, talk trash. You had a great season. It's just the team – Very good. A team in your division had, a, had an even better season. That's all it is. So I, I would I would agree with you. I don't think the Cardinals will roll over and die. This isn't a sweep series. I think the Cardinals would get one, but I would take the the Braves at four. So we would both uh, have the Dodgers and Mets, which I feel like would be one of the best uh, playoff matchups uh, in the NLDS. Who would you take? Give me the blue and give me the orange, not the Dodger blue. Put that blue yep. back in the closet. Yep. I, I think, again, amazing team. Who are the Dodgers in October? They're not the Dodgers in April through September. They're a different team, and, you know, it's the same cast of characters. I mean, yeah, don't get me wrong. This is a team that won the World Series in 2020, but make of that what you will. I mean, even last year, you know, they played Atlanta. Atlanta was a great team. They lost. I think the Mets, if the Mets can get through San Diego, the Mets are still one of the best teams in baseball. The one, the one downside is – I think the one upside for the Mets is it's a short series. I think if this was a best of seven, I might go Dodgers. I think best of five, you're probably not going to have Scherzer and DeGrom for more than one start, obviously. I think the best case is you get DeGrom and Scherzer in one start, and maybe you get DeGrom out of the bullpen. And with him saying he's leaving next year, I'd I'd run DeGrom's arm into the ground. I would would abuse him in this postseason. You, You need to win. So... You don't need to worry about his arm going forward because after this year, he said he wants to opt out and everything. I would take advantage of of him. I would take advantage of Scherzer. I mean, Scherzer's on his last legs, anyways. I mean, he wants to win another title. Uh, um, you know, I think that. I think you know, I think the Mets. I think the Mets will find a way. Um, but again, I think this goes five games. I mean, this is not going to be an easy series. I think it'd be probably the best postseason series uh, potentially outside of the World Series because two great teams, two. You got the New York market. You got the LA market. I just think that it would be, it would be something that, and you got you got superstars. I mean, you got you'd have Jacob Degrom, Max Scherzer. I mean, we've seen Max Scherzer in the postseason for the last couple of years, but I mean, or for a number of years. But Jacob Degrom, outside of you know 2015 when the Mets went to the World Series, I mean, this is something that you're looking forward to. This is like the Mariners being in the playoffs. I mean, watching Jacob Degrom start in a postseason game, I think he's going to be. I think he's going to be ready. You know, they just got to get through the Padres. I think the Padres series is going to be scary because it's the best of three. Dodgers are tough, but, you know. They choke every year. They choke. That's they, what they are. They don't have enough starting pitching. You can't – Clayton Kershaw is so iffy. Tony Goslin's coming off an injury. Julio Urias is going to finally be a starter full-time in the playoffs and not coming out of the bullpen. Yeah, their lineup is stacked, but their bullpen has issues. They're not a perfect team, and like you said, they've coasted for like the last month and a half of the last season. Last month and a half, dude. When have they? Act, I mean, seriously. Even when San, even when San Diego made that trade on the deadline, when they played that series, wasn't San Diego still like ten games out? Like LA's they were nine like, or eight, yeah. Yeah, San Diego. I mean, the Dodgers have not played with any sort of pressure. Probably, and you know, they probably haven't played with pressure all year. I mean, they're such a good team that they probably go into it thinking, yeah, we're probably going to win this division, and then they get to June and they have an eight game lead, and it's like, yep, this is business as usual. And then, you know, they play a team that hasn't had that coast, that coasted feeling all, all season long, and then they get beat. I mean, it's they're they're not the Patriots. You know, they're like the Patriots regular season, but they don't they're not like them in the playoffs. They're very vulnerable. Any team that could throw potentially DeGrom or Scherzer twice in a series, I'm gonna take over, even if they didn't beat the Braves this past weekend. I would still take them for just the simple chance and caliber pitcher they are to succeed in this circumstance. So I would go Mets in five, which would then set it up to a, a would be an insane rematch. And the NLCS would be Braves Mets. Who'd you got? One quick thing before we get to this series, I will also say on the Dodgers. I think one other thing that gets interesting is yeah, this is when the Dodgers play with pressure. Now, now the pressure turns on for them because they haven't played with it. And I think sometimes they have to almost prove to themselves like, all right, this is when we choke. This is when, you know, 
and I don't know how the media is out there, but like if I, if I was a Dodgers fan, I'd be saying, "All right, guys, let's see what you got," because you usually let us down. I mean, the fact that they've only been to they well, they've been to three World Series. I'll give them that, right? They made it in seventeen, made it in eighteen, and then they won it in twenty. But the fact that they've only got one ring and over the last ten years is embarrassing. But anyways, moving on. Mets Braves winner of the World Series. Give me the Mets. I mean, I think it's hard to get to the World Series back to back years. I think it takes a very special, talented group. Atlanta obviously may be that, but I don't. I don't think it is. I think that if the Mets can get through San Diego and then through the Dodgers, now then it would be redeem time. It's like these bastards, the Braves, took a division away from us. They took that 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 title away from us. They're the they're the repeat. They're not only the division champs. They are the defending World Series champions. Now it's our time to beat them when it matters most. Yeah, go ahead. You take another division crown. You're so great at winning the NL East, but you're not great at winning World Series. Not that the Mets are great at anything, but you know what? This would be their time to go ahead and win the whole thing and and, and advance to the World Series. I think that if they get through the Dodgers, then they'll be uh, they'll be more than ready to take on the Braves. And I think in a best of seven, they'll do it. I think it'll be again a six or seven game set. But give me the New York Mets. This is going to be the hardest series for me to predict because okay so going into this last series the Mets had beaten the Braves more times than the Braves had beaten the Mets for this season it took the Braves sweeping the Mets for them to get in this position like literally the Mets had to win one game and the Braves chances of winning the NL East would have been pretty much non-existent so they have the track record of being able to beat them. But that three-game sweep is just so deflating. But you got DeGrom and Scherzer. So, and here's what I'm going back about. Scherzer last year, when he was with the Dodgers, he had come out of games early and said his arm was tired. DeGrom has faced a couple of crappy teams over his last five starts and gotten hit up. I think that DeGrom might be experiencing a little bit of dead arm because of where he's at innings-wise and whatnot like that. It's normal for that amount of innings to have some dead arm. And you just and Scherzer hasn't been like, I'm going to start 32 games Scherzer the last couple of years. And he has experienced fatigue. You know, that's understandably so. He's almost 40. But gun to my head and having to pick one, and it's going to pain me to do it because I have a lot of friends that are Mets fans. I got to go Braves in seven, man. I just think that with that, their bullpen is better and their lineup is deeper. And they have Ronald Acuna Jr. this year on top of like Michael Michael Harris and, and Matt Olson and Austin Riley. They're just so stacked. And their rotation this year is as good as it's it's been a long time. Yeah, but you just got, said you're making this pick because of the way the last series went. So you're saying if the Mets find a way to win one of those games – you're picking the Mets. I mean, all those things existed before that series was even played. No, I still would have picked the I still would have picked the Braves at this point, regardless if the Mets won the division okay. or not. All right. I'm ju- I'm just saying why I'm having a hard time deciphering which way I'm going because these teams are so good, and you, it's basically looking for for chinks in in, in a super thick armor, you know, because both these teams are great. But if you got to go step by step. After DeGrom, DeGrom Scherzer, you know, I think the Braves have a deeper pitching staff when it comes to the three starter back. Look at their bullpen. The Mets from the left side, they don't really have a left side reliever. And their bullpen's been kind of shaky besides Edwin Diaz. And then you you even said yourself, the Mets lineup is not as scary as I think the Braves lineup is. And, you know, like Dansby, I wouldn't expect Dansby Swanson to do what he did again. But... I don't know. I I just I have to go with the Braves in seven, and it hurts right. me to say it. So well, that's you know where what? I would go. You're you're boring um, because you're picking the same matchup as last year. We already saw how that played out. I can't um, help it if greatness is greatness. I will it, say it is, though, it is. we haven't seen. When's the last time? And and I would I guess I don't watch the NBA. Maybe it's happened in the NBA recently. But when's the last time you would you've seen a repeat matchup of the World Series from the year before? I mean. It hasn't happened, I don't think, in my life in my lifetime. Maybe with the Braves and Yankees, maybe in the late nineties, but yeah, I mean that that would be all I can remember. I mean, outside of that, it seems like you're at you're, you're saying you think both teams will make it. The one caveat why I think I'm going to be wrong, one of my teams is because I do think it should benefit the team 
to get to the bye to make it to the World Series. And I have both wild card teams um, making it out of out of each league. So um, you have both favorites. You have the one. You have the one and two seed. I have a a five seed or a four seed and a I don't know. I, I think like I, I said, teams. like I said, dude, like the cream rises to the top, and those two teams, I just think, are so much better than everyone else that it, it would be extremely surprising not to see that matchup again because both teams made it to the World Series last year, and both teams are better than they were last year. That's true. Going into this, that's true. It's it's hard to pick against these two teams, so I don't know. So I would have Houston Braves, and you would have. Blue Jays Mets, which would be a, actually a pretty cool World Series. That was the World Series that was supposed to happen in 2015. That was yep. the World Series I wanted to watch when the Blue Jays traded for, I think, David Price, and they had Tulo, they had Joey Bats, they had Encarnacion. I mean, that Blue Jays team was a fun team to watch. I'm happy that they've kind of revamped their offense this year where, where they still have, you know, a lot of fun offensive players to watch hit. Um, and, you know, the New York Mets made it to the World Series in 2015, and, and then that was the end of them. We never saw them since. So, you know, different cast of characters. They don't want Matt Harvey. They don't know a Cindergard. You know that different, different. Zach stuff. Wheeler. They don't Zach Wheeler, but you know, still have a couple power power pitchers with Scherzer and Degrom. Um, if I had to pick a World Series winner, I thought that the National League was the superior league this year. Um, so if I had to pick a league to win, I would have represented the National League. And uh, with that being the case, yeah, I, I think I think the New York Mets get it done. I think the New York Mets. Uh, New ownership, new culture. I mean, second year Steve Cohen's owned this team. They win 100 games. Yes, they have a crappy series at the end of the year that prevents them from hanging an NL East title banner. But you know what? It's not going to matter because they're going to hang the World Series title banner. They're going to be holding the trophy. And I think that that series, I think Blue Jays, Mets, I think it might be over in, in five or six. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if if, uh, if the Mets get to the World Series and and just and just take it from the Jays, but um, I mean, I don't think all these series are going to go the distance. I, I, I do feel like we were kind of due for a short series, and I wouldn't be surprised if the World Series um, is quicker than people expect. So I got Toronto losing to the Mets in five or six. So basically, what you're saying is it's behind the bag. It gets through Buckner. Here comes Knight, and the Mets win it. That's the last time they've won the World Series. So, yeah, let's get rid of those yep. highlights and get some fresh ones for Mets fans, and then we can put away those old Red Sox uh, nightmares. The last Mets highlights that I remember is Hosmer scoring in that ninth inning on that miracle steal from third, uh, and they didn't get him at the plate. But So I would have the rematch of last year, and I am going Houston in six games because unlike last year, where the Braves, they did take them six. This year, the the Astros got their guy back. They got the stopper. They got the dude. They got Justin Verlander back. On top of everything else I've already said about that team, I think them having legitimate starting pitching, on top of everything else, that they would finally be able to overtake the Braves, what the Braves were able to do to them last year and win it in six games. I think it's going to be the reverse of last year, Houston in six instead of Braves in six. So that's our I prediction. agree with you there. I think if it is a rematch, I would take Houston. If Houston makes it, they're going to be a tough out. And I think, yeah, Houston, New York would be a great series. But, yeah, regardless, I mean, there's a ton of possible great matchups. And I think, yeah, between L.A., the Mets, the Braves, Houston. I mean, really, in, in the American League, outside of Houston and Toronto, yeah, the Yankees are the Yankees, but I, I don't think they have a chance to win the World Series. I think outside of Houston and Toronto, the American League is pretty boring, but the National League has a bunch of uh, powerhouses. The National League race is by far the, the superior of the two. Um, for my picks, I could definitely be wrong on the National League side, like some crazy shit like Philly somehow beating St. Louis. It's a potential. It could happen. We don't know. And, you know, in a, in a short series. So who knows? That was a hard one to pick, but I think that, the teams that made it are good, but the best of the best is better than the rest than versus years prior where like you had like a couple, you had two good teams, but those teams had the chance to be knocked off this year. I just think the Braves and the Astros are so damn good and the teams are so deep and the other teams are good, but they're not to their level. I think it's going to be hard to knock those guys out. That's just my two cents. So, all right, Mikey boy. So we gave our predictions. We're going to be back. Uh, we'll let this simmer a couple of weeks. Uh, it was very funny that uh, I talked to Mike before uh, show, and I was like, you know, our old baseball banters, 
used to be 25 minutes long and we uh we doubled that <laughs> we went almost 55 minutes so we'll be back to discuss the world series uh when it happens uh we'll preview it see how wrong we were or how right i was versus uh mike and uh we'll be back so for mike hewitt i'm john check welcome back to baseball banner we're back boys see you later guys <laughs>